I had many people throughout my time in my life tell me, you're either going to end up in jail or dead. So at that time, I had to convince myself that I'm going to make it. I was going to figure out a way to get off these streets. Regardless of how people felt to me at that time, I knew I had to make it. Not for them, but for me. But what I've realized in this journey, a lot of people have confused my confidence for arrogance. But they don't understand. They don't realize the process that I went through and how much I had to believe in myself at that time when nobody else did to make a lot of things happen in my life. And when I was finally in a good space, I realized that some things are just meant to be and to happen if you believe in yourself. The strongest ones in life are not those are the ones that show strength in front of you. The strongest ones are the ones that overcome battles you know nothing about. And let me ask you a question. What would you do? What would you do if someone was hunting to kill you? Would you stand and run? Or would you fight back? You can't bring back the ones you love. But what you can do, the best way to honor their memory, is by helping others. I knew after that night, everything changed. That we were at war. And as the body count rose, I knew this only was going to end one way. I knew what I needed to do next. This had to end. This had to end now. The day I got stabbed, I realized the difference between dying for something and dying for nothing. I realized the only reason why I fought so hard to stay alive that day was because I didn't want to die for nothing. But today, I can die for something. My way. My choice. From The only thing that's changed about D is that he's more protective of himself and who he allows in his life. My good friend, she's really like a big, a huge hostess, like she was very popular in the day, right? So she was like a star and she got stalked a lot by men whenever we would go out to where the clubs that we would work at and promote at. And I'll never forget D. He's like, listen, why don't you understand when women tell you to leave them alone, you leave them alone. Like, I'll, this is like, it's so blurry, but I remember he like, he came out with his like suit and like, and he, the guy just wouldn't listen and he knocked him out and he sleep and the guy fell to the ground and we're like he's usually trying to save someone but one thing with their someone's in trouble or if he knows someone and he sees something going down he's in the middle of it first to defend, to defend. You. even for me like I, when you're talking about almost killing someone in self-defense now that's a little bit of a different ball game so his life is time frame it is what it is right it's true mm -hmm. you know he almost got killed during that situation and, and a target went on them for a while. When you come from the streets and you make poor decisions, people are gonna judge you by those decisions. Let me ask you a question. What would you do? What would you do if someone was hunting to kill you? Would you stand and run? Or would you fight back? I never did drugs. Yeah, I maybe drank a little. But no one controlled me during those times. No one had my control over me to influence the decisions that I made. So when I joined the gang, understand, joining a gang for me back then, it wasn't bad. It was actually kind of cool, you know. When you're in the hood joining a gang, it's cool because all your friends are in the gang. Maybe all your family members are in the gang. We weren't just sitting around or thinking about it or plotting or planning or killing people every night. We were just hanging out, having a good time. But there were sometimes those situations where you can't reason with them. You can't just talk to them. You can't sit at the table and negotiate it. You sometimes have to get your hands dirty in the streets. The night they came for me, I knew one of us was walking in and one of us was walking out. But I am my brother's keeper. And I knew this had to end tonight. 